everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So last week on our Against the Odds poll, we had an all-artifact poll, and in the end, it was Thrumming Stone, the rippling artifact coming out on top so this week we are heading to modern to play a deck that i'm calling the rippling looking to combo off go like semi infinite with thrumming stone a quick reminder before we break down the rippling for modern if you enjoy this deck and you enjoy against the odds in general it would be amazing of you if you could take a quick second click that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen it's a great way to support the channel and the site for free so let's talk about Thrumming Stone. So let's start with a namesake card, Thrumming Stone. So Thrumming Stone, really simple. Five mana, legendary artifact, gives our spells Ripple 4. So Ripple means when we cast a spell, we get to look at the top X cards of our library. We reveal those cards. If we happen to hit a spell with the same name as the spell we cast, we get to cast that spell for free. So let's say we cast a Birds of Paradise. It has Ripple 4. We look at the top four cards of our library. If there's another Birds of Paradise, we get to cast that Birds of Paradise for free, which would again trigger a Thrumming Stone because we're casting that spell. Maybe we have another Birds of Paradise in the next top four, so we get that one for free too. It keeps going. So on level one, you can just play Thrumming Zone for value. The problem is, it's not really likely to give you value without building around it. I mean, you got a 60 card deck, which means even with a four of, if you cast a card, the odds are not in favor of you hitting a card with the same name as the card that you cast with your ripple effect. So how do you go about breaking Thrumming Stone? And there's one very common way, and it is the way we ended up going with the deck with cards that let you play more than four of them, like Relentless Rats and Shadowborn Apostle. So that is where we ended up. I wanted to mention one thing I did try on the way, though. So my initial attempt, I thought, well, yes, everyone knows that Shadowborn Apostle, Relentless Rats, those cards are combos with Thrumming Stone. Is there any other possible way to build around Thrumming Stone without just hoping for blind luck and hoping that you have cards in the top four? So the only other way in modern I could figure out to, like, semi-combo with Thrumming Stone was Momir, Vig, Simic, Visionary, and also kind of Congregation at Dawn. But Momir Vig, if you cast a green creature, you get to tutor for a creature, reveal it, shuffle your library, put that card on top. So in theory, if you have a Thrumming Stone out and you have a Momir Vig out, you can cast a green creature, you get to tutor up a copy of that creature with Momir Vig's ability, and then when Thrumming Stone's Ripple ability resolves, you would be able to cast that spell for free. So that was my initial attempt. The problem is, well, like, there was a whole bunch of problems. The, the biggest problem, though, was it didn't really feel like a Thrumming Stone deck. Most of the time we were playing just all these green, blue, value creatures like Coiling Oracles and Wood Elves and Thragtus. So a lot of the times we just didn't actually need Thrumming Stone or Momir Vig and we would just like cast these value creatures and never actually find a window to actually play the combo. Plus Momir Vig just dies to everything. So even if we do get it down, we got to untap with it. It's really slow. So I ended up scrapping that idea. But if you want to brew around Thrumming Stone in a non-traditional way, this I think is the only other way I could really figure out. And Anyway, back to what we're actually doing, and we went with the tried and true Thrumming Stone combo, Shadowborn Apostle. So Shadowborn Apostle, not a very powerful creature. It's a one mana one one. However, it has this weird bit of rules text where a deck can have any number of cards named Shadowborn Apostle, which means we have 21 copies of Shadowborn Apostle, which means if we can get a Thrumming Stone out and cast a Shadowborn Apostle, we are right around 80%, maybe slightly over 80% to hit another Shadowborn Apostle with the Thrumming Stone, which keeps us rippling, keeps us getting more cards, keeps us triggering ripple, keeps us getting the opportunity for more Shadowborn Apostles. So in theory, it, when we cast a single Shadowborn Apostle with a Thrumming Stone out, what should happen a high percentage of the time is we just get every single Shadowborn Apostle from our deck. Because remember, if we cast a Shadowborn Apostle and we ripple four and there's two Shadowborn Apostles or three Shadowborn Apostles, we're going to get a ripple for each of them. So even though we'll whiff on some of our ripples, the fact that we'll have these double or triple hits means odds are in favor of us just going through our whole deck, getting all 21 Shadowborn Apostles. So that is the main plan of the deck. We are 100% all in on doing one single thing, playing Thrumming Stone, casting a Shadowborn Apostle, 
in theory, just having 21 Shadowborn Apostles is enough to win us the game. If it's not enough to win us the game, we do have a plan for speeding up a little bit. If we can get a Perforos God of the Forge on the battlefield before we start rippling our Shadowborn Apostles, then we don't let our opponent untap. We don't let our opponent Wrath or Pyroclasm or Anger of the Gods. They're just going to die right away because every time one of our Shadowborn Apostles enters the battlefield, we're going to deal two damage to our opponent, two damage to our opponent, two damage to our opponent with 21 Shadowborn Apostles. That that adds up to 42 damage altogether. Should be enough to kill our opponent in basically any matchup if we can get that combo assembled. Our backup plan is we have a single Grizzlebrand because Shadowborn Apostle does have another ability. Apart from just having a ton of them in the deck, you can pay a black, sack six Shadowborn Apostles, tutor up a demon directly to the battlefield. The best demon in modern is pretty clearly Grizzlebrand. We don't have any specific combo other than using Grizzlebrand to draw our Thrumming Stones to play a bunch more Shadowborn Apostles. That's one of the downsides of Shadowborn Apostle in playing this combo. It takes up 25 slots in our deck. 25 slots to have enough Shadowborn Apostles to make sure the odds are in favor of going infinite in the sense where you get all of them with our Thrumming Stone. So there's just not that much room left over to play a real magic deck when you have 25 slots dedicated to Thrumming Stone and Shadowborn Apostle. So one Grizzlebrand, tutor up, huge lifelinking beater, draws us a bunch of cards, find us more Thrumming Stones, more Shadowborn Apostles. It's also our backup plan in the sense that if we don't happen to find Thrumming Stone, in theory, we can just hard cast six Shadowborn Apostles. They are pretty cheap and tutor up a Grizzlebrand and go that way. Otherwise, we got Dark Petition as a way to tutor up our Thrumming Stone primarily. One of the big problems with Thrumming Stone, it, we really, really need a copy of it for our deck to do anything. So there's a risk that we'll have a bunch of Shadowborn Apostles, all these one ones, have a bunch of random stuff, but not have a Thrumming Stone, which means we're left just playing one ones every turn which is not a legitimate way to win the game. So Dark Petition basically copies five and six of Thrumming Stone, although it can find other things as well. Otherwise, the biggest challenge of the deck is figuring out how to use the last few slots. So my initial idea here was play Thought Seizes, play Inquisitions, play Fatal Pushes. The problem is Thrumming Stone is five mana. Then you need one more mana to cast that for Shadowborn Apostle. So if you play a bunch of disruptive stuff in the utility slots, so to speak, the handful of slots you get that aren't dedicated to Thrumming Stones and Shadowborn Apostles, along with the other combo pieces, Perforos, Grizzlebrand, etc. If you play disruptive spells here, Thought Seizes, Fatal Pushes, Inquisitions, you are guaranteeing that you're never going to combo until turn six. You're going to hope that you have your Thrumming Stone on five, hope that you live another turn, cast a Shadowborn Apostle, hope that that's good enough, and comboing on turn six, and the combo being a whole bunch of one ones that can get a Grizzlebrand, isn't really that powerful. Modern decks are playing Grizzlebrands on turn two and so forth. Having Arbor Elf and Utopia Sprawl really, really speeds up the deck. It means, in theory, we can be playing Thrumming Stones on turn three, comboing off on turn four, and that is actually fast enough to keep up with some decks. When turn five, turn six, turn seven, that's just not fast enough in most matchups. The downside is, like I said, we lose out on the opportunity to play Thought Seizes, to play Fatal Pushes, that kind of stuff. So we are basically all in on the combo. We're hoping to play an Arbor Elf on one, Utopia Sprawl on two, turn three, we have the mana to tap and untap, tap and untap, play Play our Thrumming Stones, start comboing off, just win the game. So we're trying to be as fast as possible at finding our Thrumming Stone, playing our Thrumming Stone, trusting that with 21 Shadowborn Apostles, we're always going to have one in hand to win the game. Otherwise, we have some fetch lands in the mana base to uh, search up some shock lands so we can cast our off-color stuff like Perforos, some basic lands. As far as the sideboard, Abrupt Decay and Damnation for removal, Thought Seize and Pithing Needle is kind of catch-all disruption spells, some Graveyard Hate and Relic and Surgical Extraction, Fulminator Mage for Tron, and that is the Rippling, our Thrumming Stone against Odds deck for Modern. And uh, that's what we're playing this week. So is there any possible chance that this deck is actually going to work? And I'm not very hopeful. The speed of it is very scary. Because we need to dedicate so many slots to the combo, we don't get a lot of real magic cards and real magic deck stuff. So I feel like in some ways this is kind of like a slow version of Zombie Hunt. We do one thing 
that one thing is super powerful when it works, but that one thing is also pretty easy to disrupt, and because of the deck building restriction of that one thing, we don't have a lot of interaction or ways to kind of fend off our opponent. So we're just hoping that we get our nut draws. Uh, Arbor Elf into Utopia Sprawl, into Thrumming Stone, kill you on turn four-ish type range. So we're hoping that we get some of those nut draws. I think that it will happen. I think sooner or later we'll get those nut draws. It's not like a crazy far-fetched combo that we're never going to draw and the odds are very against. We do have redundancy. We got Dark Petition to find the Thrumming Stone. So I think that we will combo off. How consistently it works, I'm not really sure. I'm afraid that in some matchups we'll be too slow. Uh, we're susceptible to counter spells if our opponent just counters our Thrumming Stone, then we're left just playing Shadowborn Apostles. So, we'll see. We'll see how it works. Uh, we'll see. I don't think this will be one of our most competitive against the odds decks, but I'm hoping that we pick up some wins here or there, and hopefully, when we do get those wins, they will be super spectacular, really fun, super interesting. So, anyway, that's the Rippling, or Thrumming Stone, deck for modern that's our against odds deck for this week thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the gameplay videos and i will talk to you soon thanks for watching the video if you enjoyed it take a second and click that like button down below it's a great way to help support the channel for free and you can find the next video in the playlist right here